Hello everyone, so in this video lesson I'm going to show you how to implement the data source methods that are required with the UI PicaView protocol. So we were explaining in the previous lesson that we conform to the UI PicaView protocol like so. And next what we need to do is absolutely implement the data source methods in order to indicate the look and feel of the PicaView. Otherwise, if you don't indicate the number of rows or components, you cannot have a PicaView. It's not going to be visible. So right below, this is where we're going to indicate how the pick of view is going to look. First, we're going to start with the number of rows, and that's going to be 10 rows, and the number of components, so that's going to be three. So three components, and that corresponds to the number of arrays that we have right here. So that's very connected. So we're going to use the integer, so that's going to be 100 times integers, objects in that components, and we're going to use those integers to use as an indication as to which element we're going to display from the fruit array. So that's going to be an integer between 0 and 10. So we're going to see how we're going to use that later on. Let's start by actually configuring the peak of view. And we're going to go to that method, peak of view, so that's going to be view for row. And we define a constant, which is peak a label, so which is of type UI label. And we're going to start by, just an as an example, configure the first component of that peak of view. And we're going to use the fruit array. So we want to display an emojis, an emoji from that array. And we're going to use the first component, which is going to be component 1. And we're going to use, so for the index, we're going to use a row, which as you can see is a parameter from this peak of view system methods. And that's going to respond to the row that we're at. So that's going to use the row number, which is going to be between 0 and 10, to return an integer, and which is going to then be used also as an index for the fruit array. So let's just see how this looks. And here you go. So now we return this fruit for this fruit array. So what we're going to do is then display also fruit for the other components. And for that, we're going to use a switch case because we want to return a specific fruit array depending on which components that we are. So we're going to use a switch. And for the comparison, we're going to use components. So this is what we want to compare. And for the component zero, so we're going to use case zero. We have so the first component corresponds to the index zero. We're going to return this first one that we have already defined. So that's going to be for case zero. We're going to then return whichever fruit array for uh, this particular component one. Then we're going to break. So you must always break in a switch case. We're going to do the same process for the other case. So we have also the component two, and that corresponds to case one. So that's going to be component one case one, component two, like so. Next, we have the case number two, and that corresponds to the component three. And finally, you can see that Xcode is complaining because in the situation of a switch case, it must always be exhausted. So in order to remove the complaints, so the, uh, the error from Xcode, we're gonna add a default, so that's always required. And we're gonna simply actually use the same, just one randomly. Is just for the purpose of removing the, the warning from Xcode. So we're going to save and we're going to be able to run then. And here you're going to be able to see that for each component, one, two, three, we now have a fruit emoji. Next, what we're going to do is see how we can actually play. So start the spinning wheel in order to spin the wheel and display different emojis every time we press on the play button.